Out of nowhere, my husband drops this on me. Well, I have to go to work. You're on your own for the rest of the trip to the hospital. What? My brain was foggy from a fever that was soaring over 104 degrees, but I managed to ask him this while he navigated us down a gloomy, nearly deserted street. He was halfway through driving me to the hospital because of my fever. I remember his reluctance when I first asked him to drive me. He had the sour look on his face. But it was him who canceled the ambulance I had called, grumbling, Don't bother them for just a fever. As I was mulling over this, I noticed he had already pulled over. He got out and swung the passenger door open. Was he seriously going to drag me out? I held on for dear life to the passenger seat with my feeble hands, but it was to no avail. He yanked me out of the car and dumped me on the sidewalk. He gave this dismissive snort, hopped back into the driver's seat and said, You're going to have to wing it from here. The hospital's just an hour's walk away. Don't be a nuisance to others, clear? With that, he peeled off. Uh, please, stop. Come back. I knew my words were futile against the receding car. I was too drained to even stand. All I could do was cry and whimper out a cry for help. Someone help me. I'm Kelly, a 40-year-old full-time mom. I live in a small town with my husband Ray and our 16-year-old son Mike. I met Ray through a friend. Back when we started dating, he would often say, I'm going to climb up the ladder. Just you watch. I thought that maybe marrying him would lead to happiness, and at first it did. He worked at a well-known company, brought home the bacon. We had fun on our days off, catching movies and shopping. But when our son Mike started growing up, things began to shift. Ray, for one, never chipped in with childcare. He never once changed a diaper, and bath time was always a solo mission for me. Despite being able to take time off, Ray never showed up to any of Mike's school events. Heck, he never even took us on a family vacation. Long story short, he was never really a dad. These days, he and Mike barely exchange words. Of course, I try to mend their relationship, but Ray would always shrug me off saying he was beat from work. As time wore on, I realized that Ray was more of a chicken than I thought. His grand promises weren't ambition, it was just hot air. His vow to climb up the ladder was just a tactic to keep me from walking away. Sure, he makes a bit more than the average Joe, but compared to his colleagues, he hasn't really made much headway. I don't necessarily need him to be a hotshot, but if he's going to be all work and no family, he could at least... Those were my thoughts one day after dropping Mike off at soccer practice and whipping up Ray's breakfast. Ray shuffled out of the bedroom and into the living room, giving the breakfast spread on the table a hard, long look. It was the usual stuff. Toast, coffee, some fruit, and salad. He slumped into the chair and decided to start off with a sip of his coffee. Then his brows knitted together and he grumbled, What's this? Huh? Something wrong? It's the same coffee beans as always. I had already had a cup earlier and it tasted just fine. But he slammed his coffee mug down, announcing, This is terrible. I can't drink this before storming out. From that point on, he turned into a regular food critic, finding fault with every single meal I prepared. The lunchbox I lovingly packed for him was mostly untouched, him claiming it was inedible. Even after a long day's work, he barely touched his dinner, whining about being served such food. And his complaints didn't stop at my cooking, oh no. They extended to laundry and cleaning too. He'd gripe about the laundry on the balcony needing better ironing, or he'd swipe his finger on the windowsills, commenting on the accumulated dust. All of a sudden, he was picking holes in the housework, despite me doing everything as I always had. And when he took pot shots at my housekeeping, there was this undertone of comparison, as if any other woman would do a far better job. Something was off. 
It felt like he'd been paying close attention to other women doing their housework recently. That's when I started noticing his peculiar behavior, taking his smartphone with them to the bathroom, whispering on the phone in his study. I couldn't help but wonder if he was cheating. Eager to find solid proof, I rummaged through his bag, snooped on his smartphone when he was asleep, but found zilch. I thought about hiring a private eye, but he controlled our finances and I didn't have extra cash. So, with this cloud of uncertainty looming, several weeks passed by. Our conversations became even fewer, and it seemed all he knew how to do was complain. It was a high-stress situation for me. And maybe that's why, one late night, I woke up in a feverish sweat. Since I had recently started sleeping separately from Ray, I was on my own. Somehow, I gathered the strength to crawl towards the living room. Of all times, I had left my phone there. As my vision started to swim, I felt a sense of danger. I never reaction, perhaps, but I truly felt like my life was hanging in the balance. As I picked up my phone from the living room table to dial 911, Ray happened to saunter in. Why are you up at this ungodly hour? Mustering my remaining strength, I explained what was happening. He silently took the phone from my hands. Was he going to call an ambulance for me? But instead of the relief I expected, he blindsided me with his words. Calling an ambulance over a little fever? How embarrassing! You can't do housework properly, but you're an expert at causing me problems. If you get what I'm saying, just go back to sleep. You'll feel better. Instead of worrying, he just snapped at me. Half sobbing, I pleaded. Please, I need to go to the hospital. If not an ambulance, then please drive me in her car. I clung to him, begging almost incoherently. He seemed extremely unwilling, but eventually my persistent pleas seemed to break him down and he agreed to drive me. I work tomorrow, you know. How's that gonna affect my sleep? Ray grumbled incessantly from the driver's seat. All I could do was listen, my head leaning against the passenger window as rain pounded against it. We were barely five minutes from home when Ray's phone buzzed. He pulled over and picked it up, ending the call after a short exchange. I have to go to work. You're on your own for the rest of the trip to the hospital. What? Work? At this time of night? My surprise caused him to flare up. You doubting me? Can't you drop me off at the hospital first before heading to work? It's not a big deal by car. The idea of walking to the hospital in this state, in this rain, seemed absurd. I clung to the passenger seat for dear life. But he was out of the car in no time, ripping open my door, unbuckling my seatbelt, and roughly grabbing my shoulder. Get out! Quick! He practically hurled me out of the car with those words. My knees and palms scraped against the ground. The darkness made it hard to see, but it felt like I was bleeding. What the hell? That hurt! I yelled after him, but he just snorted, climbed back in the driver's seat, and zoomed off. Helpless, all I could do was watch his car disappear into the distance. The rain grew more intense, and my fever spiked. The streets were deserted, and my phone was still with him. The hospital was my only option. Using every bit of strength, I started to crawl toward it. The hospital staff would be waiting. Ray had told him I was coming. Other patients were likely waiting too. I couldn't afford to waste any more time. My consciousness wavered as I stumbled and got lost, but somehow I made it to the hospital. It had been two hours since I left home, a journey that should have taken 15 minutes by car. I spotted a nurse through the glass door as I tried to enter. Feeling a wave of relief, I lost consciousness. When I woke, I was lying in a hospital bed. The meds or the IV seemed to be working as my fever had broken. A familiar voice broke my trance. My son's voice. Mom, you okay? Mike's face filled with concern. 
Yeah, I'm okay. Sorry for scaring you. But why was he here? He smiled and helped me sit up, revealing Ray slouched in a chair. Soaked, his hair a mess, and for some reason, his legs trembling. What the heck had happened while I was out? Dad, you owe Mom an apology. Mike said seriously. Startled, Ray looked up. His face was gaunt, dark circles under his eyes. I'm sorry, he murmured. Mike wasn't exactly pleased, but he turned back to me and began recounting what had happened. After dumping me from the car, Ray had apparently headed back home. Mike had been awake, sensing something was off, and noticed my absence. When Ray came home, Mike asked him point-blank where I was. Ray, as slippery as ever, tried to weasel out of the question. But Mike, stubborn as a mule, kept pressing him until Ray finally caved and admitted that he'd left me out in the rain. Mike's a big guy, much more so than his timid dad, so you bet Ray was feeling rattled. While they were going at it, the hospital I'd crawled to called and confirmed I was okay. Mike proposed that they head over to see me, but Ray brushed him off with the old I've got to work tomorrow excuse. That's when Mike lost it. He got right up in his dad's face saying, You're walking your ass to the hospital too. Ray, scared by his son's tirade, ended up jogging all the way here in the pouring rain, all while being monitored by Mike on his bike. Talk about a workout, especially for Ray, who usually commutes by car and avoids exercise like the plague. It explains why he looks like he's been through the ringer. After telling me all this, Mike turned to me with a serious look and said, Mom, you need to dump this guy pronto. I was shocked. Not because I didn't want a divorce, but because I couldn't believe what I made my son say. All I could do was grab his hand and apologize. After that, Ray and I were on ice for a while. I wanted a divorce, but money was a snag. As a stay-at-home mom, I wasn't sure if I could support Mike properly if I left Ray. I can't help but wonder what was going through Ray's head. Fast forward a few weeks after I got really sick, I got a call on the landline. Ah, uh, hello? You're Ray's wife, right? My name's Adriana. I work with him. Uh, yes, I am. What can I do for you? Adriana told me. Ray and I are in love. Would you mind stepping aside? She'd been having an affair with my husband. I knew my suspicions of his cheating weren't unfounded. If I could divorce, I would! I blurted out, and I meant it. If she wants that jerk, she can have him. Bracing myself for a tongue lashing, I gripped the phone tightly. But she just sounded thrilled and said, Really? That makes things easier. I've got a good job, so I can handle the alimony. Give me your email and I'll send you plenty of evidence of the affair with Ray. Use it to pressure him into a divorce. I was floored by the offer, but I snapped back to reality fast. This was an opportunity I couldn't afford to miss. I gave her my email and in no time, my inbox was filled with enough evidence to sink a ship. Cozy selfies of them, screenshots of their meetup messages, you name it. That night, after making sure Mike was asleep, I cornered Ray, who was having a drink. Hey, we need to talk. He barely glanced at me, muttering, What? I was so ticked off, I turned off the TV and slammed the table. That sure got his attention. A ticked off Ray finally looked at me. I plonked the documents in front of him, divorce papers. His eyes nearly popped out of his head. We're getting a divorce. Seems like you found yourself another woman who's a big shot at work and a whiz in the kitchen. What? What are you blabbering about? Are you accusing me of having an affair? If so, then prove it. His cocky attitude hinted at a confidence in having covered his tracks well. I wasn't about to let that slide, so I served up all the evidence that Adriana had given me. His self-assured grin vanished instantly, replaced by a face on the brink of tears. Why do you have this? I, I thought I'd cleared all that away. 
Come on, a divorce is a public humiliation. Doesn't Mike need his dad? And don't you need the money? So it turned out Ray was more worried about people gossiping about him having an affair and getting divorced. Talk about selfish. I couldn't care less about being embarrassed, and Mike doesn't need a dad like you. You've hardly acted like a father till now, so don't start pretending. If you truly care about Mike, you'll cough up more than enough child support. When he finally registered my unwavering intent to divorce him, he crumpled, sobbing into his hands. This wasn't supposed to happen. Fast forward six months, and Ray and I finally made our divorce official. I staked a claim for a share of the property, damages for infidelity, and child support for Mike. I even hit his mistress with a claim for damages for adultery. All were paid in one big chunk, so I had no worries about getting by for the time being. I thought moving Mike to a new school would be too much, so we shifted to an apartment nearby and are now making do, relying on each other. Word on the street is that Ray and Adriana have started shacking up. But they're both swamped with work and are constantly at each other's throats over household chores. It looks like she was only putting in the hard yards with housework to woo Ray away from me. Now that she's got him, she's probably okay with showing her true colors. To top it all off, they both got the boot for selling the name of their big company when the word of their affair got out. Both are now strapped for cash after paying off all those damage claims in one go, but that's not my problem anymore. Since the divorce, my son has been growing happier by the day and has thrown himself into his club activities. Watching him excitedly talk about getting to play as a regular in his next game, I couldn't help but feel in my heart of hearts that I'd made the right choice.